So here I am uh, just outside of Jasper on a road called Huff Creek Road. And this is where one of the most heinous, most horrific hate crimes in American history took place. This is where the murder of James Byrd Jr. occurred. And I'm gonna tell you about this story. It's on, right on this road that I'm on. James Byrd was 49 years old and he was walking home from his parents' house early in the mornings of June, 1998. And three men picked him up. Now he knew one of them. And so he got into the back of the pickup truck. He accepted a ride home. And that ride home for James, he never made it home. They took him to a convenience store, not too far from where he was. And then after they left there, the main perpetrator, John King, told the gentleman, Sean, who was driving, to get out of the driver's seat. He was gonna take over. But first, he went to the back of the pickup truck, beat James Bird with a baseball bat. They spray painted him, his face. And then in a part that's not really known or said, they urinated on him and defecated on him. This was an extreme hate crime, and I'm going to give you the details. And it's not easy, it's not pretty, it's tough to talk about, and for you, it's probably tough to hear. So then, they chained him up by his feet to the pickup truck, right at the, right at the start of the road, not too far from here, and proceeded to drag him all the way down this road. And they also pulled his pants down before they did it to add further humiliation. <sighs> his body was dragged all the way down this road towards a church and a cemetery, an African-American cemetery and church, I might add, where his body was left. Now, over 82 pieces of his body was found along this stretch of road, 82 pieces. And his elbows were, there was no skin left. It was right to the bone because he was trying to prop his head up. He was alive for most of it until the car took a turn, the truck took a turn too fast and hit a culvert, which is a cement drainage ditch, which is along here, separating his right shoulder and head, which finally put him out of his misery, his suffering. And uh, I'm gonna show you where they took, where they left the remains of his body. But it's a three mile drive along this road to the cemetery and the church. And the police followed a three mile the next morning after a passerby found his body and reported to the police, the police followed. They didn't know what they were following at first. It was just a dark stain on the road and it was blood, James Bird's blood all the way. So now I'm gonna take you down and show you where his body was found. And I might add that, oh sorry, one second. I might add that, um, nice people. I might add, another truck. That, the police responded swiftly and within, I believe, 48 hours, the FBI were involved because they want to solve this case immediately. Let's go and uh, I'll show you what it is. Oh, I want to say that I'm going to take you to the final resting place of James Bird Jr. I've already done that part of the video because it is getting dark. So if it does get dark by the time I get to the church, don't worry, we'll get light again because I went there first to pay my respects and for you to pay your respects. Okay, let's make that drive.
And just to give you an indication, that was a minute long drive, uh, as I said. And I don't know if this is the cement culvert because this is a tight right turn. This is a very, very windy, twisty road, but um, not to get too graphic, but uh, there's only one cement culvert that I see and I think this is probably the one. And yeah. And the road continues further and further up this way towards the church. So, yeah, the sun is setting now, but here is where the three men left what remained of James Bird's body, right about where I'm standing. And some people say that it was left on the church steps. From what I've read, which was, I did a lot of research on this, it was left right halfway on the road between the cemetery and the church, which would be right around here. As you can see, yes, this is an African-American cemetery and it's fenced off and I've looked online for hours or something. Uh, I'd look to see if the, like what the hours are or how, I think it might be a private cemetery where people can only, they have the key to get in. I'm not too sure. Well, it looks like there's a gate down there. I like to check out James Bird. Like I said, he's, this is not where he's buried. He's buried in right in the city. I'm gonna take you there. I spent a lot of time reading about this case and I remember when it happened. And for the past, when I had it in my head that I'm going to come to Texas, this was number one on my list, I'd have to say, because it was a case that I read so much about and affected me as it affected millions of people. It was a huge story. Oh, the gates are wide open. So I guess I was wrong. That's good to see. That, you know what I mean? <sighs> I'm comforted by the fact that the gates are open, that the families of the people who are buried here aren't afraid of any sort of <sighs> desecration of graves or something like that. So there were three men involved in the crime and Sean, the guy that knew James, that's why James got in the truck. He knew him around town. They weren't friends, but he knew him from around town. He's serving life in prison. I think he'll get out if he does around 2038. He'll be 63 roughly. He's in uh, protected custody in, in the prison. 23 hours a day he spends in a cell. If he gets into general population, he won't survive that long. His family claims that he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time because he didn't actually drive or do any of the beating. He didn't do anything to stop it. I like to add that the three men, when they were done with what they did to James Bird right here, they went to a barbecue. The other two men were executed. One just last year, 2019. Now the one before that was around, I think I'll put the exact date, 2006 something. Lawrence Russell something, his name doesn't matter, but he ordered a huge last meal, like a huge last meal, meat lovers pizza, two chicken fried steaks, ice cream, peanut butter fudge, half a loaf of bread, more 
a lot more milkshakes, three cans of some sort, sort of soda, had delivered to his cell. Then said, no, nah, I'm not hungry. So he was being a dick right till the end. And that's why, he's the reason why uh, prisoners on Texas death row are no longer given last meals. Like to choose what they want. And the ringleader, John King, and I hate saying their names, uh, he was executed just last year. Now, Lawrence Russell, whatever his last name was, the other one that was executed a long time ago, his last words were, nope, I got none, something like that. Now, John King's last words were, capital punishment. If you ain't got capital, you get punishment. Clever, clever. He's saying, you know, if you don't got the money, then you get, as you get. No, if you do a crime like that, that's what you get. So he's wrong about that. Dead wrong. So James Byrd Jr. was a father, a son, a grandfather, a brother. Uh, he had eight siblings. He was a friend to many people. And uh, the Texas governor, sometime around 2001, signed into uh, law, the James Byrd Jr. hate law, anti-hate laws, you know what I mean. Something like called, something like that made it easier to prosecute people for hate crimes so they don't slip through the system. And then Matthew Shepard's family teamed up with the James Byrd Jr. family and Barack Obama in 2009 signed into law the Matthew Shepard James Byrd Jr. anti-hate laws as well. I hope I'm saying that right. Anti-hate laws? Well, no, hate law. You know what I mean. Anti-hate crimes. God. Huh. Sometimes when you read so much about something, you start, but I mean, you forget what I'm saying, but I'm gonna write it below there. And it's bizarre. I mean, I, this story has nothing to do with me, but just for me personally, being here is incredible. I've looked it up a million times on Google Maps, I guess out of morbid curiosity and also out of knowing I'd come here one day, not knowing I would do a video on, not knowing I would be doing it on YouTube, it was something that fascinated me and saddened me. And I can't believe I'm standing here now. And it's an odd, odd feeling, to say the least. And it's a queasy feeling. It's sad, it's humbling. And now I'm gonna take you to the final resting place of James Bird Jr. And I wanna say that driving through Jasper, I've had to talk to a few people to get the proper directions because I get turned around and stopping in places, you know, to get something to drink or coffee. Everybody's been so sweet. So nice. Jasper is not a hateful town. From what I can tell, I mean, I'm an outsider. And to be honest, I might be the wrong color to make that judgment. But from what I can tell, it's... I think a city that's tried to come together since the tragic event. But again, I don't know if I'm the right person to make that uh, assessment. But everybody, everybody's been nice. And yeah, I'm gonna give you one last shot of this peaceful little area that wasn't so peaceful that night in 1998. This street is long, this road is long. And Mr. Burt suffered tremendous suffering. This street is windy and twisty and long. Um, but it's peaceful out here and quiet. <sighs> and now I'm gonna show you it. And then we're gonna go and visit Mr. Bird's final resting place.
just add, I've had to answer this question before when I've done a heavy subject. I'm not an objective journalist. I'm not a journalist. I'm a guy who makes videos on YouTube and about subjects that interest me and that I hope interest other people and hope inspire people to look deeper into the stories and to learn more about them if they don't know about them or even if they do, correct me, tell me more, tell me their stories in the in the comments section. But I'm not a professional journalist. And sometimes uh, I'm not faking it. It gets hard, man. It gets emotional. And people say sometimes, oh, you, you can't be, you know, if you're there, you, well, you know what? You gotta come out here or to these places sometimes when there's something heavy happening and see how you feel. Cause it gets hard, but I wanna do it. And it's not fake. It's just, uh, read, you know, read a book about James Bird Jr. and try to get through it without getting emotional. I challenge you for that. Anyone with a heart will be heartbroken. And I was racing to get here because I spent my day filming frivolous videos, but fun videos. <sighs> Thinking I would make it here on time, but it's gone dark. And I didn't have time to change into the shirt I was going to wear. And I've worn it before, but I just wanted to show it. It's one of my favorite shirts I own. So here I am at the um, cemetery, Jasper City Cemetery. And if you want to find James Bird's grave, it's not easy because the directions are going to bring you in. Just look for that water tower there. Sorry. See the water tower there? Yeah. And you're going to make, you're going to pass the cemetery on your left and cemetery on your right and make a first right come down into come down that side street and the cemetery continues on the other side i didn't know that and thankfully there's a nice uh, family that was here visiting their family and they asked uh, if i was lost because i guess i looked lost wandering around driving around so many times and i was and here's mr bird right here that's them driving away right now her the lady's parents uh her father just died a year ago and her mother uh died in 2003 and they're laid to rest from right over here so this is the cemetery there used to be a fence dividing the african-american side and the white side so the fence is gone and the gentleman who who had this uh the cemetery desegregated is actually buried here as, as well but part of the fence is still over there but i think it's just too heavily wooded for them to tear it down but like i said the african-american side here and the white side over there and the lady visiting her family here she said yes they're over there we're over here because it's uh, i mean the city is integrated but i mean you're gonna be buried with your family so essentially it still is a black side and a white side but at least the off fence separating uh the people are is gone but Mr. Bird's grave is here. And it's a little upsetting because there is a fence around it because twice it's been des uh, desecrated, his grave. How awful is that? So awful. But his grave is right here. So it does read, James Bird Jr., May 2nd, 1949 to June 7th, 1998. So 
49 years old. Yeah, and it's a sad thing that this fence has to be here. I mean, people still have this, so much fresh flowers out here. And I believe this, this is mother. And that would be his father who's still living. Kind of bizarre that there's the uh, roosters crowing in the background. Now, I, as most people know, I like to leave a rock. It's hard to get in and it's hard to travel when you're traveling by plane with rocks in your suitcase. But, um,. I did pick up some along the way. I'm going to place one right there for Mr. Bird. And yeah, it's sad to see this one grave here with a fence around it. So, right behind me, there's James Bird's final resting place. May he rest in peace. I hope I told the story well. I hope it made sense in terms of how I told it. It doesn't make sense in terms of what the story is. It's a senseless, terrible crime. And so sad. So, so sad. And all we can hope is that his mother is resting peacefully now and that James is resting peacefully as well. And hopefully that two of his murderers are not. So, from Jasper, Texas, peace to you and yours, love to you and yours, and peace out.